teach a, a little bit about Daniel's past and uh, I need to give you some uh, foundation. And the first one I'd like to mention is 1 Thessalonians 5.17 where uh, Paul said, pray continuously or without ceasing. And this reminds me of a, a book that I read by a, a powerful man of God, Smith Wigglesworth. I don't know if you ever heard of Smith Wigglesworth. And when he was asked about prayer, they asked him, how long do you pray? you pray for one hour, two hours, three hours? He said, I pray for five minutes. And people were shocked. But then he, he added, but I'm not, I, I've never spent five minutes without praying. So then there was a catch to that, to that uh, sentence. So, uh, pray continually. Now, there are two anchors, anchoring the scriptures for a Daniel fast. So, here's your homework. You go home, you take uh, you know, the notes that, that you're going to, to get on your way out, and spend some time reading about the book of Daniel. In Daniel, there's two scriptures. One is Daniel prophet one, uh, uh, I'm sorry, that Daniel chapter one, where the prophet uh, said that he only ate vegetables. And that will then include fruits and probably water. Uh, then on the same book, uh, but on chapter 10, we see that the prophet ate no meat, uh, breads or foods and no wine for 21 days. Now to me that's a very easy one because it's been a, a while that I, that I stopped drinking wine. So uh, to me that will be a very easy one. But here we see some of the rules of, of the fasting done by Daniel. Now, uh, so number one, only fruits and vegetables. Number two, only water for a beverage. And number three, no sweeteners, no bread, of course, no wine. This, uh, this includes, you know, no Coca-Colas, no uh, treats, uh, stuff like this. So, and Daniel fasted for 21 days. Today we're not going to see in depth anything about this, but I want to give you this short introduction. Uh, now, so the rules, uh, uh, some of the rules that are important, uh, and those are drawn from Jewish uh, fasting principles, that there's no leaven used in fast uh, during the period of fast. Leaven is a symbol of sin, so that includes yeast, baking powder, and things like this. They're not included in the Daniel's fast. It's like when we take communion, we usually don't use the uh, white bread. Uh, if we don't have anything else available, we pray and we use white bread, but usually we use uh, kind of Jewish uh, bread that's uh, unleavened, so that there's no leaven in the, in the bread. Some other rules, uh, the fasting has to do with three areas. You know we have body, soul and spirit. You know that? So uh, the body, you know, uh, our bodies are affected when our diet changes. Uh, some of you folks, you do uh, times of diet. So how many of you do diet once in a while? One, two, three people. Oh boy, you don't need to diet. I need to diet once in a while. But uh, sometimes when we diet, we, we, uh, we can cut, for instance, coffee, uh, caffeine, and uh, chemicals, sugar. And uh, so, so when you stop eating, you have uh, headaches. So I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to give you some rules to avoid these uh, headaches. And most people also uh, will lose their weight during the Daniel fast. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. How many of you like to lose weight? Okay, we're not fasting to lose weight, but if you can do both things, then that will be a good idea, eh? Yeah. And you'll have support of your brothers and sisters. So, um, people are healed sometimes of allergies, uh, diabetes, cancer. You can be healed of many things in your body. Now, the soul. The soul is frequently referred in the Bible as the flesh. And uh, so, in the, in the Bible, we see that the soul or the flesh is greatly impacted when we fast. This is the... The, the, the area where we make decisions and the soulish realm is where we experiment cravings, we experiment all these things. So during the Daniel fast, the flesh, which is our soul, will try to rebel against the spirit and uh, stop the fast. So, so you'll be fasting and there's a craving for sugar and you need a candy or something. So that's when you need your spirit to be strong. And here we go to the spirit and the spirit it's the part of us that has been born again. So you were born again in the Spirit. It's where the Spirit of God abides. So when your flesh is acting out and uh, has cravings, then uh, your uh, spirit has to submit the flesh as you know a parent will discipline a rebellious child. I don't know if you have rebellious kids, uh, but I was a rebellious child and sometimes I needed some discipline and nobody likes discipline. Our soul, our flesh doesn't like discipline. But our spirit says, uh -uh, I'm not going to eat, I'm taking this time to seek the Lord. Okay, I'm taking this time to have my breakthrough. 
Now, uh, what about if you have health issues? If you have health issues uh, like uh, high blood blood pressure, diabetes, you know, stuff like this, you need to learn how to fast. So come and uh, seek counsel of the pastors uh, and uh, we'll tell you how you can go through a time of fasting. You can consult also a dietitian and they'll say, oh, you're going to fast, that's a good thing. A dietitian will tell you, that's a really good thing. So let me give you some rules. And you'll have these, uh, these rules. Okay, let me go a little bit further. So the Daniel fast is a very healthy way to eat. If you, if you want to ask, uh, you know, a flat answer, what is a Daniel fast? It's a, a vegan, it's a vegan diet, taken a little bit to a, an extreme. So there's a lot of people that do this all the time. So, uh, but if you have issues like if you're pregnant, nursing, uh, uh, you may want to add something to your Daniel's fast, like a little bit of fish or a little bit of chicken. Though it's not the complete Daniel's fast, so I'm going to go on a complete Daniel's fast and I'm going to encourage all the leaders to go. If you can't, you know, at least fast something. Fast, or fast TV. <laughs> that would be a good idea. Say, I'm not going to watch uh, soap operas for 21 days. Some of you might die. <laughs> Just <me. laughs> Or you say, okay, I will not read the newspaper for 21 days. You can add these things to your season of fasting. And today we're going to do the practicalities of a Daniel's fast. So, <coughs> excuse me. So if you're a diabetic, you may uh, uh, need to add carbohydrates also. Uh, so don't punish your body. This is not a total fast. We're doing a Daniel's fast. And Daniel said, for 21 days I didn't uh, eat anything pleasant, no meat and no wine. So it seems to me that he was eating other stuff, you know, potatoes, rice, I don't know what he was eating. So, but uh, I'll give you some suggestions. Su suggestions. Now, if you have a need in your life, there's a spiritual need, I'm going to give you a few steps and we're going to finish to conclude with this, okay? Uh, five things. First thing. Uh, find two or three scriptures that apply to your specific need. So let's say your need is, uh, uh, and I, I advise when you fast, don't do it on a selfish way for yourself, do it on behalf of others. And you might say, well, I don't, I don't know anyone, uh, who shall I pray for? Pray for me. Pray for the pastor, that's a good idea, so I'll have a lot of people pray for me. But if you don't have anyone to pray for, you know, pray for your church, pray for your pastor. But try to pray for someone, either a child, uh, your husband, a wife, a friend, you know. You, you need to, to know that God placed you in this world, not just to think about yourself, me, 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 and what I receive, and what I like, and what I don't like. Christians need to be the most unselfish people on planet Earth. We're here to serve God and to serve others. We're here to be a blessing. We're here to proclaim blessing. And when we fast, we learn also how to do this. So God's word is, is true and we base our prayer in His promises. So you find two or three scriptures that apply. If it is healing, let's say Isaiah 53 uh, verses uh, 3 and 4 or 2 Peter chapter 2. And you find these verses and during the time of fasting, you're praying this scripture. Second thing. Uh, open your heart to God's Holy Spirit. So ask God revelation about the subject, the matter that you pray for. Let's say you pray for uh, a child, one of your kids, and you, you want to see a transformation. And you have your own idea about his situation. How about having God's idea about the issue? Because your idea and God's idea might be different. So it's very important that you take time to ask God. Daniel spent 21 days fasting because he wanted to receive interpretation of a dream. He had a very specific dream that impressed him. He wanted a revelation. And for 21 days he fasted. And on the first day he studied, God sent the answer. But he still had to go through the 21 days of fasting in order to receive it. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, number three, and we're almost done. Write down your prayer request. This is very important. Whatever you're praying, you write it down and take it, sign it and consider it as a contract. Let's say you're praying because you really need direction in your life and you want to have a new job. Okay, you're going to write down a prayer request and you say, I need a new job, I believe I receive it. You date it September 9, 2012 and it's a contract, it's between you and the Lord. Are you following me? Two more, number four. 
learn what the enemy says about your situation and also what God says about your situation but you know whenever you're in a in a position in which you're interceding about something the devil has stuff to say it's like a church you know in the church God has things to say about the church but the devil also has things to say so the devil will say Oh, I don't like the way things are going. Oh, I don't like that pastor. Oh, I don't like the songs. Oh, I don't like this. That's the devil. That's the devil. Because God has a different idea. God says, I love you all. Even if you sing, sing badly, I love you. I love the way you sing. God says good things about us. But the enemy has a perspective. So you need to discipline yourself to speak what the Lord says instead of speaking what the devil says. The devil says, oh, you have an illness, you're going to die. But God says, you have an illness, but I have enough power to heal you. Amen. You see the difference? Okay, you following me? And last thing, and I'm going to ask uh, uh, now Frank to be ready with some ashes to start passing around those, uh, those uh, notes. Praise God for answering your need. So you, you start, on day one, you start thanking the Lord. You write down what you want. It's a contract. You date it, you sign it, and say, I believe I receive it. And then you start saying, Lord, I thank you. I'm calling the things that are, are not as if they were, and I receive these things.